Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm gonna to go over the topic of instruments found in a general aviation aircraft. So here we have our typical instrument panel associated with the general aviation flight training aircraft. I'm gonna go over all of the instruments here, and I'll start with the clock over here in the corner. This runs off the battery. You notice it has a secondhand sweep. Uh, this clock is mainly used for just generally keeping track of time, but also for instrument approaches or instrument uh, holes, for example, uh, that this is a required piece of equipment uh, when you're flying instrument uh, flight. And again, it runs off the battery and uses very little power. Um, here we have our airspeed indicator. Uh, this runs off the pitot static system. And basically the pitot ram air comes in, it's measured against the static pressure and the difference translates into an airspeed and reported on this needle here. And it's, this, uh, this gauge is, or instrument is um, noted in knots. We have a knob here that we can turn and we can basically uh, turn the outside air temperature we're seeing to the pressure altitude we're flying at and down on this curve we can see using the needle um, what our true air speed is. Over here we have our altimeter. This again runs off the pitot static system. In this case just off the static port and basically based on the static pressure it reports our altitude. Uh, this instrument down here is our vertical speed indicator. It too runs off the pitot static system and again only uses a static port. And basically the static pressure is measured uh, relative to a static um, calibrated bleed valve. And basically the, the, the difference in the pressure um, between the static air coming in and the bled off air uh, static pressure tell us what our vertical speed or climb or descent rate is. Over here we have our turn coordinator. It is a electrically driven gyro, and as you can see, there's a red flag, meaning the gyro is turned off right now, or electricity is not feeding the gyro. Um, normally when this uh, aircraft is turned on from the electrical system, that red light, a red flag goes away. But we wanna see that the wings are level and the ball centered. Over here, we have our ELT, or Emergency Locating Transmitter uh, Indicator and Switch. And basically what this tells us is if we were to crash or a high G-force was to be felt by the plane, uh, that would trigger the ELT, emergency locating transmitter, to go off so that search and rescue aircraft could come locate us. Uh, there's also a test switch here that we could hit to test um, the ELT out at certain times uh, within an hour. Here we have our attitude indicator. Uh, this attitude indicator is a Garmin G5 based unit. It's electrical uh, based unit, battery backed up. It does require the pitot-static system as well. And again, its primary function is to serve as an attitude indicator, replacing the original engine-driven vacuum pump attitude indicator that was in here. Uh, down here, we have a HSI, or horizontal situational indicator. Again, it's a Garmin G5-based unit, electrically powered with a battery uh, backup. And again, it also uses uh, pitot-static information as it can be reverted or converted over to a primary flight display uh, in the event that this one fails. Again, both of these units require the pitot static system uh, to provide information, but their primary functions are, in this case, an attitude indicator, and in this case, a directional gyro or heading indicator. Down here, we have an engine monitoring system. It provides our hobs and TAC information. It also provides our, our TAC or RPM rate. It provides our exhaust gas temperature um, for each one of the um, exhaust pipes associated with each cylinder, and also provides us our cylinder head temperature. And we can use this information to lean the aircraft out. It also provides oil pressure, temp, um, temp pressure, and oil temperature information as well, and tells us what our fuel levels are within uh, the aircraft, as well as our voltage and battery levels. Over here we have our audio panel, and it's used to allow us to determine what radio we want to transmit on. Uh, we can also control what radios we listen on at any particular time. Uh, the Garmin GTN 650 here, avionics GPS-based system, can give us not only our comm frequencies, uh, but it can also be used to give us our nav frequencies that are associated with the VOR and localizer function of this HSI. And this radio down here, KX155, can work in conjunction with this CDI, um, particularly the nav mode, for being used for VOR and ILS approach. And again, the comm radio down here uh, can be used for, again, transmitting and receiving on, but we're mainly using it for uh, listening to ASOS, AWAS, or ATIS weather information. And then lastly down here we have our transponder, MODES transponder, basically reporting our squawk code, our, our registration ID uh, for, our, uh, for our tail number of our plane, as well as our pressure altitude. So I just wanted to point out this probe here, you'll notice there's another one here. 
These are the exhaust gas temperature probes um, that basically feed the Garmin GI275 unit uh, for giving us our EGT temperatures. There's one on every exhaust pipe associated with all four cylinders. And so we can use the EGT temp probes to determine how to lean out our aircraft um, by adjusting the mixture and watching the temperatures um, on the uh, GI275 unit. Further back in here, a little bit difficult to see, but this is one example. Uh, this is the um, probe for the cylinder head temperature. Uh, and there's one again for each of the four cylinders and it's used to measure the cylinder head temperature that again feeds the GI275 unit. So that's the typical instrument panel that you see in a general aviation training aircraft. Hopefully you found this video useful and if you did, consider it the like button and subscribing to the channel.